Alright, what's up, yins guys? It's the show, 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 it's the asshole cooking show, it's the show. And today's show, I'm gonna cook a meal that I've cooked before. There was different names for it, but it's known in Google as the Connecticut Beef Dinner, but I'm gonna do it a little different this time. I'm gonna use, other people have used other variations of cheeses, so I got this. And I'm using uh, Orida Tater Tots this time, a name brand. Uh, so let's get started. I have this other half of ground chuck left over from another meal I made. And I'm going to put it in here and start browning it up and get the grease, uh, cook the grease out of it and drain it. And then I'm just going to mush this up a little bit. Going to turn this on and put my lid on. Get this stuff out of the way on the side. But we're waiting for that to uh, cook. Um, I'm going to take some of this and I'm going to spray this pan. Reason being, I don't want as I want as little as a stick as possible. So, I'm doing that, spray it real good. And now we're gonna take our tators. I'm gonna start arranging them into this pan. I'm gonna spread them on out here. After we got this meat cooked and all that, and drain the grease, I gotta, that's still gonna take some time yet. I'm gonna take half of this uh, sour cream. I end up getting a big tub of it. And then see these cream of toadstool here. The only thing I can find is a four pack, so I'm gonna use that and some sour cream, and we're gonna get prepare them ingredients as soon as I take care of the meat. So we're going to pause this. And I got my cheese here. I'm going to get ready to apply. All right. I got that ground chuck doesn't make a huge amount of grease like the cheap stuff, but that's still a substantial amount. You don't want to ruin the flavor of everything with all that grease and plus it I'm 48 years old and that too much grease will still give me pimples. Uh, so, uh, plus it ruins the flavor of, oh, and there's that, builds up in your arteries too. So, we're going to take our strainer here. Hold up. Uh, I might step out of the way here. Yeah, take this strainer. Oh, I got all kind of shit going on here. This washing stuff. All right, now we're going to take our strainer. So it's my dish rack that's in there. I'm using this part of the sink, so I don't want anything that's... Be careful, and also be careful not to strain yourself. There's that. i got to remind you that occupational hazard. You're using a strainer. There's always that risk you can... If you're not careful, you can strain yourself. You don't want to do that. Ah. Hold that with one hand. All right, just, you don't got to be really perfect about it. Just shake it around. The bulk of that grease is out of there. It's dripping a little bit there. Dripping all over the sink. Just shake it around. All right. Then throw it back in there. A little bit of it stuck to the pot there come out in the strainer but that's okay but as long as the grease from that came out of it and went into this should have had this in the way but, uh, all right we're going to prepare our ingredients we're going to open up these cans we're going to open this up got to get that protective covering off of there we're going to take about half of this we're going to start mixing our ingredients yeah i exclusively only use daisy brand 
sour cream. That was the name of one of my former pets. Uh, she lived, God rest her soul, uh, my Manx cat Daisy lived about uh, 17, over 17, almost 18 years before she got old and died. But yeah, Daisy brand sour cream. Then a commercial, do a dollop of Daisy. But yeah, we're going to throw about half a container of this in here. You can get the smaller containers if you can, but I'm going to use about half of this and I'll make this another day anyway. So I went ahead and got the bigger container. We're going to go and plop this in here. Take a big, generous spoonful here. Ugh. That out of there. Yeah, measure that up. Oh, uh, I a little bit more. I got to get out of there. I'll measure that out off camera. But even if you put that much, but that's not quite half. But I'm gonna take care of that off camera. And then I'm gonna throw this in here. Since I'm using the camera with only one hand. And rather than run risk of us accidentally stepping on my partner's feet, you know, she ran the camera. I try to put a camera above. I just do everything with one hand and then off camera. I'll just scrape with a spoon out. Like you really need, like you really need to or care about watching me scrape the cans out and scrape every little morsel out of these cans on camera anyway. But off camera, I'll just scrape that out. And always just. Throw away your stuff in the trash as you go. Don't make a huge ass mess, but okay. And I got a little bit of this. Uh, did I want to just get rid of this uh, spaghetti cheese? There's not much left over in there anyway. I could throw away the container. I'm going to add that in there. I don't always do that, but that's not that much. It's only like barely a third of a container. So I can throw that container away. So we're going to mix this, the meat, and the soup. Oh yeah, I'm gonna maybe put Hold on, see mix this and see how it goes. Some people put like um a little bit of water in there from the cans because they're cleaning the cans out anyway. You gotta be careful of that too, because you don't want this to be too soupy. You don't want it to be too pasty or too soupy either. You want it to spread all over this, and then we're going to have our cheese, you know, after there too. But but this other idea I had since, you know, my other episodes with Hamburger and Helper, I never actually did it, but you're actually supposed to put milk in Hamburger and Helper. Instead of a can of water, I think maybe you put a little can of milk in here to wash this out because you got cheese and you got milk anyway. And I never do that with a hamburger helper. I very seldom do it. I don't. Asshole cooking show, you don't always follow directions. You know what I mean? That's what it, the show is. Oh, yeah, and let's not forget Worcestershire sauce is pretty strong. Like you got about like a four shakes, like four quick shakes. One, two, three, four. And that goes in there and that adds liquid to it too, but it's very strong stuff. Wait, I got some of this. I got to get some more milk tomorrow. I usually buy five, four jugs at a time. I'm going to put a little bit of this in a can, not too much, because I'm going to, they're not that much. That's, I don't want to do too much because that's like really, before I put this away. And then I'm going to swish this around in here. With the spoon, I'm not gonna bore you with all that. To wash the, uh... then that makes scraping that out a lot easier. I'm gonna do that off a of camera, but I'm gonna throw that in here. Cause I figure, why use water? Cause some things, you know, make you use milk anyway. Like Hamburger Helper, a lot of recipes use milk and add protein to it, and then add flavor. But I almost overdid it here, but I, don't, I need to add more sour cream anyway because I don't quite have half a thing in here. But uh, I'm going to have my cheese and so just maybe in one more spoonful of that. But All right. 
So I was using the other half of the beef that I used before too. I could have had more beef. And sometimes I usually put more beef than that, but I'm using the last of what I had there before. But if I opened up a new beef, that would be too much and I'd still have leftover. So that's a little less beef in there. And this, I want it to be, like I said, not overly runny. If you put too much water or milk, you can, you know, uh, make it too thin. But I think it's going to be fine. But I put Rice Krispies. We're going to do that on the top to finish it off with the cheese. But I'm going to just put a little bit of the, this in this mix. Because I want it to fall between these potatoes. There's a layer, not too much. I'm going to mix. See in there. If I accidentally make it a little too thin, there, just like a handful or so. Because then that's going to fall between all these potatoes, right? All right, so we're going to take this. I can dump the, take the pot and just dump it, but I'm just going to put all this in here. Because I don't want it to see there. That's about the... I'm just, like, modifying, in a, testing out a theory here and trying to do a, something a little different. So I'm thinking this Rice Krispies in with this little bit of mix since I made it a little bit thin. It's going to fall between the potatoes and go perfect. And I'm going to put some on top later. And we're going to add our cheese after. But for now we're going to spread this all over. Just distribute it all over. And this is going to be baked. Well the cheese is going to going to fall into here too. We're going to have a... Uh, smear this down. Oops, i got to keep the camera at a certain angle. I'm going to finish out this up, scrape the pot and off camera here and then get this all in here. But there, I'm just going to smooth it all, fill the corners up. All right, so we smeared that all in there. And I got it like so it's like all around the potatoes. I got it. So we're almost re about ready for our cheese. I got to open it up. But. I'm going to take one, just a, just a quick sprinkle of this in here because I got a mental picture of how the cheese is going to go with this because this is a, a different balance of ingredients, a different balance of ingredients than I did the last time. So I'm just going to, like before I put the cheese in there because and then we're going to just like a sprinkle of that, but I'm going to put some more of this on top after I do my cheese. There's like a, a method to my madness in this because this will go into my liquid here. There we go, and then I'm going to put some of this cheese on top of it, and then I'm going to put some more of these Rice Krispies over top. I'm going to cover the top with foil anyway, but... The objective of it, when you put your cheese still on top, you put Rice Krispies like on top of it. And then the cheese kind of goes into it. But um, I put my foil on there too anyway because I don't want the stove splattered. But I also spray my foil. I'll show you that before that. So the foil don't stick to it anyway too. But that's going to come up. But I'm going to open my cheese here. Right. I got my cheese open. Some people call for just the cheddar. But I got this here. I'm going to try something a little bit different. There's people that will do things that are different. but I'm just going to dump a bunch of this on here. I don't think the whole bag of cheese is going to fit. But uh, I'm going to smooth this around here. I put about half the bag of that cheese, this cheese in here. So we're smoothing out on only half of the bag. If I put beyond that at this point, wait a minute. Got to spread it even around. Oh, you know what? That's spreading pretty good. Uh, spreading pretty good. I want to get the corners. I'm going to kind of smack it a little bit. Uh, okay, I'm going to take this flat object. You can rake it with a flat object, but I'm going to take this and spank it a little bit. Get it into down into the liquid, the mixture. I think I'm going to get one more handful out of here. 
start getting it all over the place. Grab a big, a nice handful, because I'm missing some spots. There we go. Then we're going to give it a spanking. Just rake this across here real gently. Give it a spanking so it uh, goes down in there. And You can even take the palm of your hand, hand and kind of like smush it down. Make sure it's going down there. You want that to melt all in there. There's some that it doesn't quite reach the lip of the pan. Kind of even it up a little bit. See how much of this. Yeah, I've got a pretty good bit. Not going to fit the whole damn thing of cheese in here. Debate and maybe put one more hand. Let's see if I can get away with it. Oh, i got to have room for my Rice Krispies topper too. Just one more handful, and I'm going to distribute it real easy, nice and neat. Yeah, we don't want the cheese to be up too close to the lip of the pan because uh, I've got to make room for. They want to put. Be fairly generous with this. We're going to just. Put a coating here because that's going to melt into that and it's going to keep your cheese from burning. But also a trick I do with my lasagna, I don't do anything uncovered in the stove anyway. That's going to make a mess. I spray my foil anyway with uh, the spray that I showed you in the beginning. Like I, I do that with my lasagna too so no cheese gets stuck to the foil. So we're going to do that. But I put this anyway, it's going to melt into here. Just kind of spread it around. See that from a distance? It's gonna when you spread it around, it's gonna melt into here real nicely. Oh, I better preheat this thing too. I could have had that preheated already. This stove makes you press the button to preheat it. it takes a few minutes to preheat, about 400 degrees. And then when I cover this up, I'm gonna check it in about a half an hour. Since you've got these potatoes and this and cheese and everything, it shouldn't take really beyond a half hour. You heat this up, the potatoes get hot and everything. And uh, it should be good. But that's good. Maybe one more quick handful. You can see there's some spot. Try to distribute this in here. That cheese is going to absorb in there. See, oh, the cheese won't bubble up so much. Unlike making lasagna, you're putting this over potatoes and you've got the soup mixture and everything. This might bubble up, so this um, is going to keep everything from bubbling up too much and it's going to absorb. So I, why I modified the recipe, I put some of it in to my liquid there too. I might have uh, screwed up and had it too liquidy, you know what I mean? So I tried that, you know. Well, it's it was like jello-like consistency, you know what I mean? I don't want it to be... I just want to do it and try it anyway. All right, so now this looks, looks really good. Wow, this looks uh, better than the last times I did it. We're gonna get ready to cover it up. Okay, so I got out my piece of foil. I'm gonna take the non-shiny side and lay it here for a second. And I'm gonna take a little bit of this. I do this with my lasagnas too. We're gonna to spray a coating, a light, just a quick. Don't saturate. Quick spray. I do this for my lasagnas too. 
and uh, the cheese don't get all stuck all over. But for this dinner, people, uh, and then the Rice Krispies won't burn to it and all that. Then I'm going to cover this up. So I got it all wrapped up nice and neat. And oven preheated. I'm going to take this and put it in here. Close it on up. And it's uh, 3.37 now. So uh, I'm going to check it in a half hour. So maybe 4.07. Check it in a half hour. See how well the cheese is molten and everything else and everything molten together. And see how it goes make sure everything in the middle you don't want it to be cold in the middle either but if it has to be in a little longer we'll see i mean we got tater tots that just come out of the freezer you know what i mean too so stay tuned in the meantime i'm gonna wash this stuff up clean the counter and the stove and all that jazz so stay tuned for the unveiling. Check it first and end in the unveiling. All right, I'm going to take the love glove here. And I'm going to open this up. Whew. Sounds like it's sizzling in there. So this, that's only one layer of taters. And um, I know that's, that sounds like that's going to be done. No doubt about that. I'm going to be melted cheese. Do the unveiling. Woo, look at that. That looks to me like it melted together. Now that's like smoking hot right now. So I'm going to give it about maybe a half hour to cool. Let me cut up right now. This Neither of us have Kevlar mouths either. So uh, that's going to be on the hot side. Oh, see, that's, uh, if I go and take that out of there, and I'm not going to do that right now. I'm just going to let that uh, cool a little bit. About a half an hour. Oh, and when you have this in the fridge for the next day, too, just like lasagna, it cuts up real nice. When you eat it hot, it's going to be when you take it out it's going to be all over just like lasagna is but when you have it in the fridge chilled chill it up a little bit take it out cut a piece off put it in the microwave and this is the same way i can take this freshly cooked thing out of here it's going to be all over it's going to be like a anyway yeah we're going to give it a half hour to cool and serve it up all right i waited about a half hour that's cool enough it's probably going to come come out a little bit kind of but it all eats the same and the next day just like lasagna it gets uh ah there we are that succulent morsel there I'm gonna try one piece for now let me get your fork I'll get mine. Here you go. Thank you. And I'll get mine. I'll just cut myself a piece like a little bit bigger. And it ah, come out of there. Plop. Yeah, mine kind of. A little taste of this. Mmm, mm, good. That's good. Alrighty then, I'm gonna chow down on this. Mine kind of flopped out, but uh, hey, it eats the same. That looks pretty good. And you can't really go too wrong if you accidentally make uh, your um, mixture a little thin. You can just add your Rice Krispies into it. and 
um, improvise, you can add a little bit of spaghetti cheese to it, or tweak the recipe if you want or whatever, based on, you know, uh, you can add a little bit more meat, like I said, but I didn't want to open up a whole new roll of that meat, because uh, then I'll have leftovers anyway, it'd be too much meat, so I just, you can have more meat in here if you want, I've done one before with more meat in it, but, all right, that's it. Uh, you get the idea. So uh, that's it for this video. Uh, try this. You might like it. And I'm going to chow down on this. And I'm going to end this video. So thank you for watching the show. The show, the show. This has been the show. The Asshole Cooking Show. Thank you for watching the show. The show, the show. The show, the show. The show. The show.